after a good day of work, we probably need to rest until the next day, right? Your computer is the same. So today, your computer is the best way to ensure it is always up to date. More often than not, vendors issue updates such as GitLab to patch security vulnerabilities that may already have been exploited by attackers. I know it can be annoying, but updating is the best first line of defense for you individually. Don't hesitate to tick the automatically keep my Mac up to date box to ensure you always have the relevant updates. And all this works also for software such as Google Chrome and all your tabs will be waiting for you once the update is done. My tip is to set expiration dates on all keys and tokens you create. Should they be leaked, this reduces the chances that they are still valid at the time they are found and used. And it's good security hygiene, which forces you to review all the applications where you have entered your credentials and ask yourself if that's still needed. My recommendation would be 30 days for the higher risk tokens, like GitLab personal access tokens, and a year for things like SSH private keys, which aren't ever supposed to be shared. My digital security tip is on digital security while traveling. Everyone trusts their home Wi-Fi network. You set it up yourself, you know it's safe and secure, and you feel comfortable using it. But what do you do when you're traveling? What do you do when you're working from a hotel, from a shared working space, or from a coffee shop? Public Wi-Fi networks are a prime target for malicious actors to snoop on your digital activity, whether that be your banking activity, your social media activity, or the work you're doing for GitLab. A simple technique is to use a VPN. A VPN is a virtual private network and it essentially creates a secure channel between you and the VPN vendor's infrastructure, which allows you to secure your communications from anybody that may be snooping on that public Wi-Fi network. It's a really simple technique. We have a ton of really helpful information through handbook pages on VPN vendors and different techniques to implement. So the next time you're traveling, remember to use a VPN. Hi, my security tip. Use hardware tokens as a second factor. So for example, a YubiKey instead of Google Authenticator. Such hardware tokens using the web awesome standard are resistant to phishing attacks. Unlike those numbers from a Google Authenticator, which you could easily give to a phishing site, with web awesome, the URL would be taken into account and an attacker on a phishing site can't steal your second factor for another site. So stay safe and use a YubiKey. It's said that the most secure passwords are the ones that you don't know. How do you achieve this? You can use a password manager. Helps you generate long, random, and unique passwords and stores them for you. You might be wondering whether you can really give a company all your passwords. Well, the easy answer is you don't. The password manager only stores encrypted versions of your passwords and only you have the key to decrypt and view them. 1Password and Bitwarden are some good examples of password managers that can provide such functionality and help keep your online presence safe. Hi, I would like to introduce you to one of my favorite security tools on my laptop. Little Snitch is a smart firewall sitting on top of the building macOS firewall. It can detect any new and unusual network connection on your laptop. It will ask you for a permission before letting any packet going through. This means nothing can send data in your back anymore. I hope you want to try out this tool now that every software engineer should have on the laptop. Thanks. These days, most of us have experienced a phishing email, but today attackers are becoming a little more tricky and are now also using SMS messages. One very common scam that we have even seen here at GitLab are text messages pretending to be from Sid or someone else in a leadership role asking for a favor, which typically involves buying gift cards or taking some other action. Here at GitLab, we leverage Slack, email, and of course GitLab itself to communicate. Our leadership team, IT, and security departments will never unexpectedly text you work-related items or URLs to click on. If you do receive an SMS message claiming to be from someone at GitLab, please verify via a known channel such as Slack before you take any action. Be sure to check out the GitLab handbook for more information on how to report a suspicious message. Prevention is always a goal, but let's face it, attackers find their way in. This is why it's also important to focus on reducing the impact of a breach. As a red teamer, I find the most common way to escalate is to look for secrets on the file system of a compromised host. Here's some tips to slow us down. Number one, access secrets programmatically. Use tools like Vault or a password manager. Do not leave secrets in your home directory, especially on shared systems like Bastion hosts. Two, be aware of what you're logging in your shell's history and learn some ways to avoid capturing secrets there. Three, think ephemeral. Use short-lived credentials, revoke active sessions, and destroy test environments when they're no longer needed. I recommend writing unit tests that cover unexpected cases. 
Oftentimes when writing software, we focus on expected use cases or planned use cases, and our specs tend to reflect that bias. So we should be taking the time to think about creative or malicious ways that user input can be controlled and abused. Uh, this is worth our time because uh, inevitably you'll find something in which code did not behave the way you expected it to, uh, and it will help you prevent some security problems before they get released. It also might even expose some other use cases or unexpected situations that aren't necessarily security problems, but you wouldn't want to have happen anyways. For security more generally, it's use a password manager and set up multi-factor authentication. But I think people will have heard that already. For AppSec, I'd go back to that point about staying curious. Ask what if and keep following that thread. It can lead to new skills, new security knowledge, new experiences. And even if you're participating in a bug bounty program, it can lead to cash money. Uh, so that's great. Um, but yeah, stay curious. Um, dig deeper. That's my security tip.